What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, got a little bit different video for you guys today. It's going to be a little bit different speed than what it normally is. Um, as you guys know, this little iconic bike of Cody's, this is an 01 TW200. Um, I'm going to put some videos up here. Uh, the, the one video is really, it, it pretty much really put the channel on the map. I think it's got 50 or 60,000 views of Cody riding this on a popular little road in front of me on the CT125 and people just really love the video and there's countless other ones you can find on there where I try to keep up with them on this bike but uh, if you guys follow along on the channel in the community section there you probably know that unfortunately on Father's Day of this year which was just a few days ago this little bike was the victim of a crime <laughs> um, not it wasn't funny then but it kind of is now um and we got it back so shout out to a really good friend of ours that uh helped us out a ton that had some inside info and also the pickens county sheriff's department here where we live did an excellent job man they really stayed on it and uh was able to get so i'll put some pictures up now of exactly what got stolen it was this bike of course and uh, my cousin has a might as well say it's a 300 ex it's actually a 250x frame with a 300 ex engine he, he actually bought the bike with a bent frame so i had an old x frame and we put on there so they uh i believe it was two or three guys and they broke into cody's shop and helped themselves to this bike meth heads of course um this bike the 250x 300 ex and the and cody has a really nice electric bike that he uses for deer hunting and it's a, a lot of money invested in it and they just took it you know like it was their own <laughs> for free and then some countless other tools that we still probably don't even know so this bike come back pretty much unscathed except for of course it's missing the side panel here cody had a rear rack a cycle racks rack on it the tag's gone and that rack had an apache 4800 um box and the box had some really nice you know a good silky big boy saw and all kinds of countless things that you need when you go ride so we did acquire something back that wasn't ours and it's this uh <laughs> awesome keychain right yeah so i just wanted to take this opportunity guys to talk about this a little bit and accomplish two things here i want to tell you guys about how you know unfortunately young kids can get on methamphetamine and go down the wrong road and uh also want to hopefully maybe some circuit court judges or solicitors that get to see this for the county we live in maybe they'll try to get rid of this revolving door policy so i say revolving door because i'm pretty sure i can't i don't have a hundred percent proof of this but I'm pretty sure from some pretty good sources last year my buddy Dan if you go and watch the uh, BMW restoration video where we got that BMW k1200 running that was Dan there that actually helped me and bought that bike but he had some irreplaceable th uh, three-wheelers Honda 250r 250x just some really nice stuff that you could never replace and then a couple bikes that needed work but these same kids helped themselves to those bikes last year out of Dan's yard. Now, <clears throat> same county, but a different area. But I've been drenched <laughs> into this life of these crackheads, meth heads, in my county here, in my little town that I love so much of. And they've really just got their claws in, in this area. So, you know, this is... This is what happens when we let drugs come into the country. Kids get on them, you know, deadbeat parents not paying their kids any attention. Just, It's just a spiral of terribleness, and it ends up affecting people that are, you know, trying to work hard and, and basically work for what they have. So I just want I mean, I hate that it's a rant or whatever, but this stuff needs to get out there we're just completely done with these idiots that think that they can just take from from us you know i there's part of me that feels sorry for some kids that's never heard a single word of encouragement in their whole life I, that's definitely a fact but 
then again, I'm not sure that anybody held them down and gave them that first hit of meth either. Somebody dropped the ball raising that kid to ever even try that for the first time. So there's there's no punishment, no repercussion for any of this. These kids that took from us this time have, you know, 40 page rap sheets of theft, grand theft. Uh, one kid was out on attempted murder charges. They just let them out. And what I think what the problem is is some of these judges, and if you guys are judges and hear this, if you're living in some nice home up in the vineyards and had never hit, been hit by meth, us, us people that are down here working every day, it affects us. You know, we it's a total invasion. It turns your life upside down. These people ripped the power meter off of Cody's shot wall. They helped, they broke the door down and helped themselves to everything he's ever worked for. They could have, I mean, he's got a lot more in there that they could have got, you know. And uh, luckily, though, we got it back the very next day. So the great deputies in this county did their job. You know, all they can do is put the cuffs on these guys and throw them in the slammer, and they can't really control what happens to them in the court system. So unfortunate because these kids need some kind of, I, I don't know what you do with them, but they need some kind of chain gang or something to teach them. And, and from what I'm hearing, this particular county, and I think it's this way all over the country now, the chain gang's cruel to unusual punishment for them because it's so hot. Yeah, come on, we're out here working in it. And these kids are working just as hard stealing this stuff in the heat. So come on, we ain't trying to hear that. It's ridiculous, man. This is just, it's just time for this to get cured. Just, just a few hundred yards right through there is Meth Head USA. And it's unfortunate, you know, because I had to pretty much let them know that if they come over here, they're going to be they're going to be having a bad day because I got a lot of stuff and I, I don't have time to put padlocks on everything like Fort Knox around here. You know, it's just ridiculous. I shouldn't have to worry about these idiots taking my hard-earned stuff. But anyway, <laughs> the, the T-Dub is going to get back in working order. We're going to get this panel. Uh, Cody hasn't ordered a new rack yet because there is a possibility that that rack is still in that shop and we're trying to get a search warrant to go get the rest of the stuff the 300 ex i was missing a fuel tank and some other things so uh but yeah i just wanted to talk to you guys and get you guys opinion about you know something needs to be done i mean i, I, I get that it's a bike and it didn't kill anybody or anything but the problem is and what we've talked about before, it's like if if they come here and they got their arms wrapped around my stuff and they're taking it, there's a good chance that I could do something bad to them without even realizing I'm doing it. Because from, I mean, my whole life I've had things stolen from me by these idiots, you know? Like, it started when I was in high school, which was 30-something years ago. I had a, a Suzuki LT125 that I had worked all summer for, and I came home from school one day and it was gone. You know, kind of the first thing is like, I must have rolled over to the neighbor's yard or something, but it was stolen. So it, the problem is if you did that to, the, to somebody that was taking your stuff, you're going to be the one in prison and they'll never get in trouble. So something needs to happen to these people at the, at the judicial level to where there's some kind of repercussion for what they're doing you know it's they get high on meth they go break in they steal the hat right off your head just to pay for another hit of meth you know and that's just how it goes so it's just it's just unfortunate sad and it's really just riding around on leads to where these bikes might be it's really got its claws in around here they're actually cooking it up in abandoned houses and we're talking just a few miles from right here. It's beautiful out here where I live. You know, it's it's just one of the best parts of the country. I don't I don't really need to be anywhere else to, except for to visit. This is home for me. But I feel like if this goes unchecked, this is going to get out of control, and it's it's beginning to already. You know, here it is hitting us last year with thousands of dollars worth of stuff, and then this year, this iconic machine that's been seen all over the channel is actually responsible for at least half of the channel's growth you know and and cody's dad so this was cody's brother brother's bike years ago 
and I actually uh, the very first video I put up of it I believe somebody saw it and said hey that used to be my bike up here in Hendersonville and Cody's brother's like yeah that's who I bought it from so we're talking years and years of ownership Cody's dad put a clutch in it Cody's done a ton of work to it you know I did the pro cycle dash on it and a ton of work to it before we went to the um out to out west it's been you know 10,000 miles across the United States to the Pacific Northwest to do some riding um it's it's just too much history behind it to just let it go you know so the story with this thing i'll give you guys a quick rundown of how it went down how we got it back and all that good stuff and uh then i'll let you go i mean this this was just a quick video i wanted you to share with you know with what happened with the bike but anyway uh our friend found it pretty much knew where it was found out where it was um got the police involved they went to get the bike and the four-wheeler and the e-bike and a couple of the kids jumped on this and took off through the woods on it he could hear it going through the woods so we they got the four-wheeler back then and uh the e-bike i believe and no no t-dub it was gone so the next town up where from where we live here one of the meth head kids lived up there and uh he was just helping himself i guess to riding it around town the next day like nothing and one of the detectives seen it because yep it's school bus yellow and there's no other school bus yellow t-dub in pickens county i think uh the guys out at pro cycle had one and i think it's green now but uh they didn't get away with it so the detective got it rode it back to the to the county impound lot where we picked it up with along with the four-wheeler and the bike so but I tell you what, man, it, it was a, a long week of sleepless nights and worrying about if we were ever going to get the stuff back. And it's just tough, you know, but that's how we ended up getting the T-Dub back and other stuff. And as I said, shout out to Pickens County for for helping us get that stuff. That, that was great. You know, I'm just glad that they worked hard. And as you see on my shirt here, I voted today and it was actually a county sheriff runoff. Um my grandfather was a business owner years ago. He had a little small hardware store in Uptown Pickens and uh, the sheriff for Pickens County was a good friend of his and he was the sheriff forever. And when he got too old to run another fella and now it's time for someone else. So we hope that uh, whoever gets elected will be hard on these criminals. I mean, like I said though, all they can do is put cuffs on them. The, the rest is up to the judicial system. And uh, I just hope that maybe if any of you prosecutors, solicitors, judges, anybody in charge wants a meeting with uh, with some of us, you know, business owners and people around the county here, sit down and let us tell you what we think about these meth heads and stealing everybody's stuff blind, then uh, get in touch with me. I'm easy to find. We'll be glad to sit down with you and talk to you about it. It's just, it's out of control. And I just feel like maybe some of you guys aren't really ever hit by this stuff you know if you live in a gated community or something and you just never been through this you you might need to hear how it is out here in the rural parts of the county so that's about all i got guys this is i just wanted to share this with you guys it's really unscathed it's running good um they didn't really they might have added a little bit of mud to the tires or something but uh it didn't really get hurt too bad at all so we're glad for that, glad of that. It's just one of those things where it's just too nice a bike just to give to somebody, you know? I mean, this bike really isn't even for sale, but it's been through a lot, and shout out for, to Cody for letting me keep it some and work on it and ride it and everything, and it's sort of just a little community <laughs> bike that we all share, but, uh, but yeah, guys, I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel and. I know this isn't the best news. Well, it is pretty good news that we got it back, but it's not the best news in the world that our county's sort of dwindling down. Well, there's a whole lot worse places in the nation, and there's a whole lot worse things that could happen to somebody than have their stuff stolen, I know. But uh, it, it, this isn't where it ends, you know. If things keep getting broke into and getting taken and somebody ends up losing their, their life or their livelihood or something, you know, then it could just ruin somebody that's never broken the law a single time in their life maybe a speeding ticket or two and 
we're just completely, absolutely done with theft in this county. 100% done with it. I'll tell you something crazy, and this is something I'm going to share if I get a meeting with uh, with the county or you know people in charge. And I'm not, I'm not going to share the exact location, but this is somewhere out west that we love. I don't want to share this because everybody might flock to it. <laughs> and this might not be completely true, but eventually. But we rolled into this small town on a Saturday night late. Been riding all day. And it's 3,000 miles from here. And got in, got uh, Charlie had us a hotel room. And the next morning, which was Sunday morning early, we rolled out and we uh, were going to look for a little place to have breakfast. And there was a Honda Power Sports dealer on the way there, just on the main drag there through town. And we stopped and looked. And all, so pretty much all of their inventory looked to me like uh, their ATVs. I believe this was a Honda Yamaha dealer. Their ATVs, their side-by-sides, they had some mowers, some zero-turn mowers and some other items pretty much the whole front of the store and all of their inventory was outside now they're closed it's early sunday morning there's not a chain or lock on the property anywhere and i was shocked i mean that stuff would have been gone that night in this town that i grew up in now that wasn't that wouldn't have happened 40 years 30 40 years ago but now there's no way that stuff would none of, none of it would be there so I asked the lady at the, I don't remember if I asked the lady at the hotel or where we ate breakfast. I can't remember. I just basically said, hey, let me ask you a question. You know, we saw all those boxes and stuff up there. Do you guys ever have uh, problems with theft? And her exact words were, if I, if I remember, I'm going to try to tell it just like she said it. She said, you know, son, we had a couple of people show up here to town through the years that had a little bit of sticky fingers. And nobody come to think of it nobody's ever seen them again so take that how you will <laughs> but i think i know what they're talking about you know the problem is here we don't really have anywhere to hide anybody <laughs> but i do believe that that kind of justice would put a stop to it and, and then you know i get a lot of people saying well it's just material things but think about it they break into your house in the middle of the night and take your stuff what are you supposed to do just let them have it they've invaded your space and it's just uh, cody lived in his shop for two years he could have been in there in the bed asleep they came at like four o'clock in the morning and uh how did they know nobody was there you know they pulled the power meter down they get and that kills the camera so that that we don't have any cameras or any footage of them but anyway that's a something i'd like to share with those guys if i could ever get a little sit down meeting with those people you know those people in power are elected officials some of them and it's going to be tough to to get a sit down meeting with them face to face but i sure would love to but maybe just maybe one of them will see this and know that we've just about had enough of it you know it every single kid that i got a lead for now some of these kids are a little older too but most of them are early 20s i think Every single one of them had rap sheet after rap sheet after rap sheet of them for the exact same thing as taking this bike. And there's chop shops to where that, uh, some someone told me that one of those three wheelers that got taken last year was cut up into like one inch pieces, the whole frame and everything and just scattered out behind this chop shop that these kids have. So, you know, I just don't really feel sorry for, especially these parents that have done, there, there's some, dig and i did that there's like three generations of meth you know the grandpa did it the dad did it now the kids did it and now his kids are gonna do it and uh you know it's just a vicious cycle and it's, it needs to stop man it's ridiculous but all right guys listen we're gonna um we're gonna have some cool stuff coming this is a down kind of downer video or whatever but the t-dub's back the tr the the 300EX is back, the e-bike's back. We're gonna get this thing trail worthy again and go from here, you know. This is gonna be a good summer. Uh, we've already got some good footage of some riding we've done locally. Uh, no real huge big trips this year, I don't think. We may try to do a little bit of uh, up north from here since it's a little cooler. It's been brutal hot, man. This is the end of June here and it's just been hot, let me tell you. So we might try to go find some elevation if we get some weekends off, but 
Uh, the shop's been really busy because air conditioning problems with cars and stuff. So that's one thing. But listen, you guys take care. I appreciate you um, hanging out here at the channel and I appreciate you listening to me rant about the crackheads. <laughs> but uh, it is really an upbeat thing that the bike's back. We just we got to get rid of some of this theft around here. You guys make sure and come back for the next one. Appreciate you guys. Take care.